Hello everyone, this is Abby Flanamish from Atlas Core headquarters in Washington, D.C. Today is April 18th, 2013, and a very exciting day here at Atlas Core. It is our seventh birthday. So today, we are going to celebrate with a special message from our founder and CEO, Scott Beale. Scott Beale is a social entrepreneur who came through the ranks of political activism, government, the State Department, Ashoka, and created Atlas Core in 2006. And now we are a growing network. And we're here today to celebrate that spirit, that vision, that international collaboration, and to hear the future of where Atlas Core is headed. So join me in welcoming our founder and CEO, Scott Beal. Thank you, Abby, very much. Uh, thank you, everybody, for participating in today's Google Hangout. It's our first State of the Union, or State of the Core, as I like to call it. And it's our first uh, Hangout. So let's, let's see if it works and uh, let us know what you think. Uh, as Abby said, I, I'm here to tell you a little bit about where we are now, uh, where we've been, and where we're going. And I'm, I couldn't be more excited about the State of Atlas Core as it is today. So I, I want to, again, begin by welcoming our, our fellows, our alumni, our friends, and our fans all around the world. Ever since the very beginning, we've benefited tremendously from individual supporters who believe in this idea, who believe in our work, and we are what we are because of, because of your support. I'm in Washington, D.C. today to celebrate our seventh anniversary, and it's, it's an exciting time to look back on from where the idea was to where it is to where we hope to be even in a, a, few, a few short years. Uh, it was uh, April 18th when I a couple months after I left State Department uh, to launch Atlas Core uh, with my wife uh, and many friends and supporters, uh, it, it's hard to imagine that it was just seven years ago. With early support from corporations like DuPont and foundations like Midiar and Humanity United and even the Case Foundation and, and over 2,000 supporters who helped us get Atlas Core off the ground, uh, we started with very humble beginnings but a big, broad, ambitious idea and since then, we've really delivered on a lot of those early promises uh, that we made uh, however many, seven years ago. Uh, I want to begin by telling you, reminding you, for those, especially those of you who are new, a little bit more about our founding principles. Many of you have heard this before, but it's certainly worth repeating, because those founding principles haven't changed. Uh, there are three founding principles to Atlas Core. The first is that talent is universally distributed in the world, but opportunity is not. One thing I learned working with the State Department and working with Ashoka, that all around the world, in big cities and small towns, uh, in rich, the richest countries and in the poorest countries, you find the most talented and passionate people. People who care, people who want to make a difference, but people who don't necessarily have the opportunity to leverage that skill and passion. In Atlas Core, we seek out those individuals who have the skill and desire to make the world a better place and give them an opportunity to leverage that talent. As, a, as an American, especially as a, as, a, as a white male who grew up in Delaware, I could go and volunteer anywhere in the world. But for someone from around the world to come volunteer in the United States or to serve in a different country is much more difficult. And what the private sector knows is you find the smartest people to go to the best corporations and you know, they grow businesses and they, they create value added to the companies and we all benefit from that. The academic sector, the athletic sector, everybody knows this, but the non-private sector at the time, it had been 45 years of Americans serving overseas with organizations like the Peace Corps, and few exceptions of people coming to serve in the United States. Talent is universally distributed, but opportunity is not. The second principle is that there's a market failure, especially in the nonprofit sector, that doesn't allow people to go from the global south to the north, from, from around the world to the United States, as easy it is for me to go, uh, or other U.S. citizens to go abroad. Due to visas and financial restrictions, it's a lot more complicated for that flow of knowledge. Not only do we lose the opportunity to learn from folks overseas, but those individuals overseas uh, lose the opportunity to contribute their knowledge and gain skills and experience in the United States. It was almost impossible to set up a multilateral exchange because of visa restrictions and, and financial hurdles. It just wasn't happening. And the third founding principle is that the most effective way to create social change is by developing leaders. I was working on anti-human trafficking in India, addressing modern-day slavery for the U.S. government, and I, I, I quickly realized that with, even with all the resources of the U.S. government, it was going to be very difficult uh, for me alone to be able to address human trafficking. And that what we really needed to do was empower leaders 
find passionate, smart individuals in those communities and give them the skills and network. Give them the, 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 the lessons and the best practices for them to address the social issues that they're passionate about. So the most effective way that I've seen in, in addressing the most critical social issues from global health challenges to environmental challenges to youth education, whatever the case may be, is to find an individual leader, a rising leader in that country and community, and give them the skills and network and support. And by doing that, we can truly make a difference on major social issues. Those are the founding principles of Atlas Core seven years ago, and those are our guiding principles today. And it's nice when the idea ends up lining up with reality, but it is possible to overcome those hurdles, to find those individuals, and to create this global network. So what have we seen? What have we seen in our seven years? Well, in seven years, we've now launched 12 classes. Our 12th class actually comes in a couple of weeks, so 11 classes. We've supported 155 leaders from 49 different countries. We have tons of metrics, and we're putting more of those up on our website uh, every month. But let me tell you a couple key stories. Uh, many of you know the story of Sergio Zuluaga, who we call our, our very first fellow. He was the first fellow to get his visa. So not that long ago, but uh, let's see the impact that Sergio had. So Sergio had been working in Colombia, outside of Bogota, working with young people in very disadvantaged, poor neighborhoods that had been affected by the, the Civil War in Colombia. He came and served in the United States at Mobilize org as their vice president for online activism. Sergio learned uh, in, in new skills about social entrepreneurship, how to be an effective nonprofit leader, and met other nonprofit leaders from around the world. Sergio went back to Colombia, ended up working with an organization called Somos Mas, which is one of the, the largest networks of entrepreneurs in Colombia, and then ultimately helped uh, President Santos, the, the new president of Colombia, uh, get elected and became an advisor to the president the Director of Social Innovation and Entrepreneurship, uh, kind of a sub-cabinet level position for the President of Columbia. From rising nonprofit leader to Atlas Core Fellow to Presidential Advisor in, in about five years. We have other fellows too, another from Latin America is Katia Dantes, who have been working in Brazil on uh, women's issues and, and youth issues and came to the International Center for Missing and Exploited Children. Had an amazing experience here, extended for an extra six months and ended up going back to Brazil to open up an office for ICMIC in Brazil, expanding their work in Latin America. But not just in Latin America, in other countries as well. Uh, we have a fellow from Sudan, Mohamed Abdallah, who came and served at Susan G. Komen, a doctor from Sudan, came and served at Susan G. Komen for the cure to teach Komen what they know, what he knows about women's health, what he knows about addressing health issues in Africa helping expand their knowledge and address the issues that they're addressing here, and then take that back to Sudan, take that back to Africa uh, with his work through Susan G. Komen. And a fellow in Pakistan, Shamila County. Shamila came and, um, and she came in and learned and met nonprofit leaders here in the United States. And then when she went back to Pakistan, she began to work for uh, right, right to Play, addressing, uh, helping support young people in Pakistan, giving them avenues to learn and to grow and to become future leaders, especially young women in Pakistan. We have so many stories, probably about 155 stories from our fellows from all over the world who are really having a major impact in the work that they're doing. So what about this year? What are we doing now? Well, in just a few weeks, our 12th class of fellows will arrive. And by the end of this year, we expect to have grown up to 200 nonprofit leaders uh, from 60 different countries. We're sending fellows to cities across the United States. Uh, down to Atlanta at Habitat for Humanity and Norfolk, Virginia at Operation Smile, uh, Lutheran Social Services in Minneapolis, the Center for Citizen Diplomacy in Des Moines, Iowa, across the coast to San Francisco at Net Impact. We have fellows up in New York at places like UNICEF, and a lot of our fellows are still here in D.C. at organizations like Ashoka and the U.N. Foundation and many more. The best nonprofit leaders from all over the world serving at many of the best organizations here. Uh, three times a year, they're participating in our Global Leadership Lab, these four-day immersions where they come in here from great speakers, learn new skills, and learn from each other, and learn how they can grow their impact and grow their sense of, of their, their role in the world and their ability to affect social challenges in their home country. We're proud to be a big partner with the U.S. State Department. State Department has, supported, has worked with us and supported us to bring leaders from Sudan, 14 leaders from Sudan, will be coming to the United States this year, this year, because of support from the Special Envoy's Office 
and we're, we plan on expanding that work to South Sudan as well. We've partnered with State Department in, in pa from Pakistan to Panama, in India and in uh, Japan and, and soon Korea, all over the world. We're partnering with, with the government and with foundations and individuals to bring leaders here and really growing our program. For five years now, we've also sent fellows to Latin America, to cities in Colombia, uh, to serve at nonprofits there. A true multilateral exchange. In fact, Abby, who introduced me, is an alum of our program, uh, who served in, in Bogota and then came back to the United States, and then we stole her to, to join our team. We, it's a true multilateral exchange where Americans and people from other countries have gone to serve in, in cities in Colombia. So it's not just north-south or south-north, but rather the most talented people from any country going to the best organizations, no matter where they may be. Joining a fellowship, again, not just learning skills, not just going to a conference where they learn skills to, to how to be a better leader, but joining a community, a family, a fellowship of people who support them over time. We have found that this fellowship is so critical. This community of nonprofit leaders not only challenges our fellows, but supports them, supports them in the long run. This year we've made great strides in improving our, our training program, rebranding it as the Global Leadership Lab, uh, and really making a deeper immersion, uh, providing much more opportunities for distance learning in our program so fellows can log in no matter what city they're in, or even if they're alumni of the program who graduated years earlier. Uh, because of this in improved distance learning program, we've been able to launch a new initiative that we call Atlas Core Community Leaders. This year we'll support 300 community leaders all around the world. These are nonprofit leaders, much like Atlas Core Fellows, but they don't leave their country. So from the comfort of their country in, in, in Burma or, or Spain or in Mexico, while they still work at their organizations overseas, they can participate in our distance learning program, our professional development, and our professional network, which means by the end of this year, not only will we have supported 200 individuals as fellows who have, who have crossed borders, but also 300 people as community leaders, 500 people in just over seven years in a deep leadership development experience. It's, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. Um, so what else? Vision. I want to tell you briefly about our vision for 2015. So this year we launched a new program, a new strategic plan, if you will, called Vision 2015 for where we want the organization to be in about three years. In fact, we're quite proud that American Express has supported our uh, Vision 2013 with 2015 with a three-year grant, uh, and other funders are coming on board as well. So what is our vision for the future? Well, among many things, we plan on growing Atlas Core to 100 fellows a year and becoming 100% operationally sustainable. There's all sorts of talk and even hype about social entrepreneurship, about how to scale a program and how to measure impact and how to make programs truly sustainable. But Atlas Core is a unique financial model where host organizations are paying us for our fellows. And as we grow to 100 fellows a year, we reach a tipping point, uh, an equilibrium, if you will, where the basic expenses, our operational expenses, are covered by that host organization cost share. But we'll still raise money. We'll still count on your support. But that support, you will know, will go to strengthening our program, uh, investing in our training, expanding to new cities, not to keep the lights on, not to pay salaries. We will be at equilibrium uh, when we reach 100 fellows a year. We also plan on to continue to improve the prestige of our program. Right now, about 2,000 people apply for 50 positions. We want to maintain that competitiveness and, if anything, increase it as we expand to new countries uh, and, and, and reach new, new parts of the world. We want to continue to strengthen our training program and not just strengthen community leaders, but also launch a new program we're calling Atlas Core Scholars. And with scholars, what we'll be doing is supporting um, individuals in the United States to participate in our global, ship, global leadership lab programs in the U.S. Again, not needing to cross borders, but still joining our professional network, our training program, and, and of course our distance, distance learning program as well. We have lots of plans. In fact, there's, we're putting more information up on, on Vision 2015 up, up on our website. And I really would love for you to get, to, get more involved, to get more involved in it. Our vision, more broadly speaking, is a world where talented people and good ideas cross borders. Where the, the most effective leaders, where we break down that, that market failure that exists. Where when there's good ideas and talented people all over the, all over the world, they will have the opportunity to cross borders and address those critical social issues. Because what we've learned 
the idea from seven years ago and what we've learned from our experience is that this is the most effective way to make a difference. Empower leaders, support them, network them, give them a lifelong of support to go back to their countries addressing the most critical issues of our day. We cannot tackle these issues alone, uh, and we, but we can tackle them together. And when people learn from each other across borders, from different religions, different communities, different cultural contexts, but they learn from the fundamental human experience, no matter what their country may be, they, they become more impactful and more talented leaders when they go back home to their home countries. Our vision is a sustainable community uh, that does not grow or shrink based off the, the whims of the economy or of donors, but is sustainable through the value that we create, the value of our training program, and the value that our fellows provide to the host organizations. We want to partner with governments, not just the U.S. government and the Colombian government, but other governments around the world to continue to expand our work to multiple countries all over the world, becoming a true multilateral exchange, kind of a true global new Peace Corps, if you will, in partnership with the Peace Corps, to tackle challenges together that we can never solve on our own. Finally, let me just end uh, with how you can get involved. Uh, Atlas Corps has always been about individuals coming together to make a difference. And from the very beginning when we won America's Giving Challenge, with almost 2,000 people giving us $23 to get off the ground, uh, Atlas Corps has been supported by individuals like you, in fact, probably many of you. There are so many ways that you can get involved, from making sure that you're on our newsletter, to following us on social media, on our Facebook pages, and our, our Twitter accounts, to spreading the word, being an evangelist for the, the word of multilateral exchange, for the, the spreading the word for Spanish-speaking U.S. citizens to go down to Columbia, or talented nonprofit leaders all over the world to apply to become Atlas Corps Fellows. Nominate candidates, spread the word about our program. Become a donor, literally whether it's $10 or $10,000, or whether you're giving $10 a month to our program. Buy into this model. Buy into this program. You know, every day we spend money on, on products, uh, on, on whatever the case may be, and through our dollars, we're endorsing corporations and endorsing a certain lifestyle and endorsing a certain way of living. Well, I want to encourage you by putting some of your, your dollars, not only generally the nonprofit sector, but specifically to Atlas Core, and have Atlas Core be a part of who you are and buy into this, this nonprofit and become an owner of our work. Um, and uh, people are calling right now to donate to Atlas Core. Uh, it'd be great if this was actually a live call in. Uh, finally, we look for people to join our selection board. Uh, we're always looking for new young trustees. There's many ways you can get involved in our work. Look up our website, go to the Get Involved section, and if you have ideas, contact us. Contact me so you can uh, become a part of this organization and help us grow. Uh, so again, thank you for celebrating seven years with us. Uh, thank you for all that you've done uh, over the last seven years, and, and join us in our journey as we march towards Vision 2015 and march towards creating a world where no matter what religion, no matter what, no matter what country you're from, no matter what color of your skin, we can work together working on critical social issues, making a true difference in the world. Thank you very much. Take care.